little kid, one of my favorite TV shows was The Partridge Family. It was about... It was about a mom and her kids. They played in a band together. They had all kinds of fun adventures. And it was such a neat family. I wish I could have called that one my home. I also dreamt of someday being Lori. She was the smiling girl behind the keys. But none of this was in the cards for me because I was the only son of a hopeful immigrant family and I had a role to play. I did well in school, got married, had a kid, a great career, but everyone's affections were directed to the accomplished facade of the man I had created. And I felt very alone. So I came out late in life, and I saw some transgender friends playing in a band, and I was absolutely mesmerized. Now, I knew nothing about rock music. I hadn't been to a concert before. All I had to offer to them were my childhood skills as a violin player. <laughs> but I promised I would work hard. I would study any instrument. And I asked them, can I join the band? And they said, yes. And so I bought a whole bunch of equipment. I learned how to play the keys. We put together hours and hours of music so we could fill an entire night. And we started looking for our first big public shows to play. And it was in the town of Port Angeles, Washington, <laughs> which is a pretty rugged and coastal town way out on the Olympic Peninsula. I know it mainly for logging and fishing. It's the last place you'd expect to find a trans band playing in a bar. But we put on our colorful outfits and we strutted into that bar. And at nine o'clock, it was already packed because everyone knew that that band was coming. And the men, they clutched their beers. And the women, they looked us up and down as we walked towards the stage. And then we started playing. And the 80s music drew the women on the floor. And then the men followed. And we have played for 15 years out there to packed houses. It was at these shows, at these shows I met this man, and he was a self-described redneck. At first he was really creeped out by us, and now we had conversations, gave each other hugs, and he told me a story about a friend of his with whom he'd lost touch. And this friend got in back, in, back in touch with him and said that she had transitioned and was living as a woman and wanted to reconnect. And much to his credit, because he had come to know us as people, not as fears and assumptions, but at a level of music and connection, he said he was not afraid to meet her. And they did meet, and they did reconnect. And I had to ask him, knowing who you are and where you came from, and you're standing here talking with me, giving me hugs, and knowing your friend, where your friend came from, and who she has become, which one of you changed more? And he thought for a second, and this little smile crept across his face, and he said, me, I've changed more. This thing that we do, it is a risky thing. There are people in places who would have nothing to do with us. We stick out everywhere we go. But because we have authenticity, people tell us that they're inspired. And I think it's like we lift this suffocating, wet blanket of conformity off of everybody by being a little bit bigger than life. And it creates space underneath where people can finally breathe and be themselves. One of my favorite songs that we play is called Major Tom. It's an obscure song about an astronaut <laughs> who gets lost in space. And even though he's lost, it ends on this beautiful chorus over and over of I'm coming home. And I can look across our audiences and I see young, old, gay, straight, queer, trans, abled, and not. They are all dancing and singing together because we're taking the risk to be ourselves and they can join us. And when that chorus hits, Everyone tips their heads back and they reach their hands for the ceiling and they're all singing, I'm coming home. And me, I'm the smiling girl behind the keys. I'm making music and people are dancing and singing with me. 
it feels like home.